Everybody, Brother Jason coming to you for your Friday devotion. First off, thank you for giving me just a few minutes to spend some time with you, with me, in the Word. Happy Friday. Happy whatever day it is you get to watch this video. I do pray that, that the Lord will bless you in your obedience. But I tell you what, I pray that he convicts us in our disobedience to try to help us to get in line. I'm going to read a set of verses to you this morning that... Uh, are often, often taken out of context. You know, we love to take a piece of this scripture and a piece of that scripture and then plug it together out of order, out of context, and come up with something to try to justify our mm, sinfulness, maybe try to cover up a little of our sinfulness there. But what we're going to read from is chapter, or excuse me, Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. We're going to read verses 1 through 5. You know, you, you hear it from little kids all the way up to grown-ups. Even if the grown-ups don't say it, they insinuate it. But a lot of folks will say, don't judge me. Don't judge me. You know, look look at you. Don't judge me. The Bible says don't judge me. Well, that, that's part of what the Bible says. That's not looking at the whole verse. That's not looking at the entire context of the verse. So that's what we're going to look at today for our Friday devotion. Matthew chapter 7, starting in verse 1, it says, Judge not, but it keeps going, right? that you be not judged. Mm, that, that's a little bit different than just saying, don't judge me. It says, judge not that you be not judged. So what happens there? If you start being judgmental, if you start pointing out everybody else's faults but yours, then you better get ready to be judged. And that's what the scripture says. But we're going to keep on reading there. For with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. Verse 3, And why beholdest thou the mote that is in the brother's eye, but consider not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in your own eye. Thou hypocrite. The scripture said that. I didn't make that up. The scripture says, thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thy own eye. Then thou shalt see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. All too often, church, I want you to listen up. We try to cover up the sins in our own life. We try to cover up the sins, the, 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 the shortcomings, the, the, the points where we're grieving the Holy Spirit in our own life. We try to cover ours up by pointing out someone else's. We say, hey, you got a little old stick, a little sin in your life. You need to get rid of that. And the whole time we're holding on to this big sin in our life, maybe in our home, maybe in our marriage, maybe in our relationships, but, but we're hanging on to it, and we try to cover it up with this little one. See, I, 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 there's no way I can cover this, uh, this big one up with this little one. It, it just ain't going to happen. What we end up doing is actually bringing light on ourselves. Folks, I just want to share with you this morning, we need to look within ourselves. We, we need to work to clean up what is in our life. We need to fear God. That is what we need to do. Some of the notes here, it says, Jesus tells us to examine our own motives. What is your motive? By pointing out somebody else's fault. By trying to make somebody else look bad. What, what is your motive there? Jesus tells us to, to examine our motives and conduct in, 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 in our conduct. You know, instead of, instead of judging others there. The traits that uh, bother us in others often are habits that we dislike in ourselves. Our unbroken bad habits and behavior and patterns are the very ones we want to change in others, things in our lives. And we'll start pointing those out in others, places that we have shortcomings and we fall to. So if you're ready to, to criticize somebody, what we need to do is back up, take that opportunity, take that moment to fix something in our own life. When we get ready to point somebody else out, and, and I tell you what, people will fall out of church over the silliest thing and many times ain't got anything to do with the Word of God. It's just some personal thing that they have, and, and they get mad at somebody. Let me tell you, don't, don't judge God by people. Don't let something silly keep you out of worshiping 
and, and, and coming together with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Church, come on, be better than that. Be stronger than that. Come together. Let's fight through the adversity. Not, not let's fight each other in the adversity. Let's fight through it. So, so the Bible says we're trying to get this out of somebody's life when we got this in ours and we need to, we, we need to get it out. So what should we do? We need to take care of the big problem. And, and, and when we take care of the big problem, we're more apt to be able to take care and help people take care of these little problems in their lives. We need to focus, get things right here. We need to look in the mirror. So next time somebody tells you, don't judge me, you need to remember what actually the Word of God says. And they say, the Bible says, don't judge me, right? Well, the Bible says, judge not, uh, that you be not judged. So that's where we need to be careful. So anyway, hey, thank you for allowing me to spend a few minutes. I hope you have a blessed day. And again, I hope God blesses our obedience. I hope and I pray that he convicts our disobedience. I pray that he encourages us, lifts us up where we need it. I pray that he humbles us where we need that also. Be blessed, my friend. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, just thank you. Lord, that your word is so plain. It is so clearly written, Lord, that just a wretch such as I, Lord, can learn from it, Lord, that any of us can, Lord, if we just humble ourselves, Lord, and come before you with, with humility, Lord, accepting that, that we are short of ever being what we need to be, Lord, but you gave us the opportunity to be all that you would have us to be in you. Lord, I thank you for your love, your mercy, your grace. Lord, I thank you for your patience with me. Lord, I thank you for our, your, your patience with our nation. Lord, I lift up our nation to you. Lord, may we grow up, Lord. May we get up, Lord. May we look back to our first love, Lord. You, you are the one and only, Lord, that can clean this up. Lord, and I pray those of us that are brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord, I pray that we will stand up. Lord, we will live in such a way that it brings glory and honor to your name, Lord. I pray that we don't condemn one another, Lord. We lift one another up, Lord. I pray, Lord, for our leaders, Lord, here in our community, in our city, in our parish, in our great, wonderful state of Louisiana, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I pray, Lord, for all of our leaders across this great nation, Lord, especially those that, uh, Lord, have been elected to represent us on Capitol Hill, Lord. I pray that you'll convict their hearts, Lord, to follow you, your leadership, your guidance, your direction, Lord. I pray, Lord, for our president, our vice president, Lord. I pray that they will be convicted to look unto you for all the guidance, Lord, the only guidance that they need, Lord. We thank you so much, Lord, for being so patient with us. May we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen.